Thank you for tuning in today. Today I want to talk to you about choices. There's many choices we make. I read a statistic not long ago that a, one person studied that we take, make about 70 choices in a day and over 70 years that's 1.8 million choices in a lifetime. I believe that statistic's probably old because if you look at how many choices we have today, we, we choose uh, not only what kind of phone we want, what kind of carrier we're going to take and they're always competing for our business. Uh, back when I was young we had three TV stations and maybe on a clear day we got to watch PBS and now there's 200 plus uh, channels. You can pick cable, satellite, uh, Roku TV, YouTube TV, uh, Fire Stick. There's all kinds of choices. It hit me just uh, the other summer my wife and I were away in Michigan and we went to an ice cream shop and you think that would be a simple, a simple uh, thing. You walk in and you get your favorite ice cream but upon arrival at this ice cream shop they were making their own waffle cones cake cones sugar cones and you walk in and there's 500 different flavors of ice cream you get your cone dipped or you get uh, uh, the dip on the inside the outside sprinkles or peanuts on the cone and then you get to the ice cream you pick your ice cream then you got to pick uh, how many scoops you want on uh, your ice cream cone and what toppings you might want on that so we see today we're inundated with choices but today I want to talk about a choice that we all have to make and is based on what the Word of God has to say. If you're watching this today, probably somebody uh, that really cares about you or maybe you stumbled about, about this, uh, but it's not by an accident that you're watching this today. Uh, God wants you to hear what He has for us, to cho the choice He has for us in His Word. And I want to share that with you uh, today. Uh, when we're out and about, we hear many people when we ask them about eternity. We ask them do they know where they're going to spend eternity and we get a lot of different answers but there's very few that have a answer that is solid that says I know if I were to die today I'd go to heaven. Uh, there's a lot of hope so or I believe so or I've been a, a good person and we want to look at the Word of God and see what God says about eternity. Jesus after teaching on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7 he gives us this picture of these two paths we have in life. He says, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Verse 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. In the selection of texts in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is saying there's two paths. One path leads to destruction. And he says that path is broad and there's many that are on that path. And then he says there's another path that's straight and there's a gate that's narrow on that path. And that path leads to deliverance. So we're going to look at a choice today, a choice that everybody has to make. And you say, well, I'll stick with you to the end, but I'm not sure I'm going to make a choice. E either accepting what God has to say is a choice that brings deliverance, or making a choice to put it off or, or not accept it, you're making a choice. So I, I beg, I plead that you stick with through the end. We have good news and bad news we find in Scripture. And we're going to start with, all, uh, uh, with the bad news here. Uh, first of all, we see that with all the choices we have, eternity isn't multiple choice. There's not many choices. It's still just one or the other. Heaven or hell. Uh, the Scripture says in 1 John 5, 11, and this is the record that God has given unto us, eternal life. And this life is in Jesus, or in His Son. Verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. He says that you may know that you have eternal life. He says that all of us may know that we have eternal life. God wants you to know that you can go through this life and that you have eternal life. Everybody at one point in their life or another has thought about eternity. They've thought about that question, where 
am I going after I die? I, I remember uh, as a young teenage boy in circumstances in, in my life that it came to me and I had to wrestle with that question myself and had to come up with the answer. And I had the answer. And then one day somebody shared with me from the Word of God how I can know uh, that I have eternal life. So he says in that verse, he says, He that hath the Son hath life. So what does it mean to have the Son? We're going to look at this scripture and find out. Many people think that good works will get us to have eternal life. Uh, the Bible says uh, in John chapter 3, Jesus is talking to a religious leader at the time, and he says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, that's strange, be born again. Jesus was teaching a principle there about spiritual birth, not physical birth, and the religious leader through that teaching understood. Other people say, I believe in God. James chapter 2 tells us that thou believest there is a God, thou believest good, but also the devils believe and they tremble that there is a God. So there's more than just a belief in God. Others say, well, you know, I've been a member of a church. I've gone to church my whole life. Well, Jesus says in Revelation chapter 20, whosoever was not found in the book of life is cast in to the lake of fire. It doesn't matter what church role or what our background was as far as attending church. It's not about the, our, our religious affiliation. It's about our faith and where we put our faith and our hope into Jesus Christ or not. And he says that there's a book of life. Is your name written in that book of life? If you're not certain, that verse I read in 1 John chapter 5, he says he's written these things that you may know that you have eternal life. So there's a, our problem. Our problem is sin. The Bible tells us that because of one man's sin, Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. Because of his sin, we were all born into our sin. Think about Jesus' ministry for a moment. When Jesus was about teaching, and Jesus was healing, and Jesus went to the woman at the well, or he healed the lepers, or he healed the blind man. Was it about their... Uh, their religious affiliation was it because they were good people was it because they gave money no and Jesus did their healing or he called people to follow him he tells them it's their faith he tells them their faith has made them whole so man's problem is we're separated from God because of sin God is holy Romans chapter 5 says that God commendeth his love toward us and while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Christ came for a reason. And I challenge you to, to look through the Scriptures, read the Gospels, and see why Jesus came. He came because He loved us. And there was a penalty that He had to pay for you and I. He says there, because we were yet sinners. Sin means we miss the mark. God is holy and God is the standard. And because we are sinners, we've missed that mark. The Bible says in Isaiah that all our righteousness, all the good in us is but filthy rags before a holy God. Think about that a, a minute. There's a lot of good people. I know a lot of good people uh, personally, but the Bible says our goodness in measured with the holy God is nothing but whole, uh, filthy rags there. All men have sinned. Romans chapter 3 Verse 23 in our Bible, it says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In other words, your sin, my sin, has separated us from God. Our works are worthless uh, as far as eternity. They're, they're just good deeds. And you think, why did Jesus come? Did He come to, to just teach us how to, to live a good life? Did He just come to teach us how to do good unto others? If He did that, he could have just ascended back to heaven. He could have just went back to heaven. But he had a mission that he came for, and that was for you and I. So it's not of our works. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that. It says, For grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. Our sin separated us from God, and no good works that we can do can bridge that gap. But the good news is, 
that that gap has been bridged that God had prepared a way only a holy God could do that and he made a path for us God told us that there is a payment for our sin and he says the wages of sin is death in Romans chapter 6 he says the wages of sin are death and he said well I know we're all gonna die we, we go and we know people that have died and we know that we're not going to live forever on this earth. But what he was talking about is not just our physical death. In Revelation 20 it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So what Jesus was telling Nicodemus about needing to be born again spiritually was to avoid this second death. Because those that do not trust Jesus Christ, those that trust in their good works, have to stand before a holy God and say, well, I did this, I did that. And God says, all our good works are but filthy rags. And he says that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That's the bad news. But the good news is that God had prepared a way. God prepared a plan. And that's the whole reason that Jesus came, was to give us the good news to provide a way for us. The rest of Romans chapter 6 says this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not only is God perfect, not only is God uh, holy, but God is a God of love and God is a God of mercy and God is a God of grace. God gives us what we don't deserve and He withholds from us what we do deserve. That's His grace and mercy that He shows us. Back in Romans chapter 5, it says that God commanded His love. That means God demonstrated His love. The way that God loved us was that He showed it, uh, His love for us. So the good news of the Bible is that God gave us a gift, the gift of His own Son to provide salvation for you and I. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Scripture says this, For he that hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of him. The righteousness of God in him. So our sin separated us from God. But the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness of sin. You go back from the very first sin where God shed the blood of an animal to cover Adam and Eve. And from them we see the blood that has been shed throughout the scripture to cover sins. But the good news is that Jesus was a spotless Lamb of God and He shed His blood once and for all for you and I. That if we put our faith and trust in what the Bible says, not based on what religion, not based on if we go to this church or that church, but based on our faith in Jesus Christ. Listen to what the scripture says in John chapter 3. That religious leader that Jesus was talking to, he says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. He said, if those that have not believed are already condemned, we were born sinners. But the good news is that God loved us, that he gave us a gift, a gift is just that. We don't earn it. We didn't even deserve it. He gave it freely to the whole world. For God so loved the world. Insert your name there. Just as I did. I understood when I was lost and I needed a Savior. I said, for God so loved Troy. And make it personal. To know that what Jesus went through wasn't just for a multitude. Not just for everybody. But he personalized it. He knew you. He knew me, and He paid that sin on the cross of Calvary. What does that mean for us? It means that all of us are equal before God. We were all sinners, and we have to come the same way. It means a sinner must recognize their sinful way. If we're going to have the gift that God has given us, if we're going to receive it, we need to understand that we are all sinful. Secondly, we need to understand that none of our human efforts equal 
salvation. None of our human effort, none of our good deeds will give us what God has already prepared for us, the gift that He has already given to us. And thirdly, uh, we need to rely totally on what Christ has done. We need to rely totally on the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary for our sins. You think about it, why did Jesus come? Why did he why did he come? Why did he endure the the beating? Why did he go all the way to the cross? Because there was a sin debt that had to be paid. And he paid it for you and he paid it for me. And when we personalize that and we see what Jesus did and we acknowledge our, our sin, we acknowledge that we can't save ourselves, we put our faith and trust what he has already done. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So now's the time we have to answer the life's most important question. Am I going to accept what God has done for me? Am I going to accept the gift that God has given to me? That's a gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Or am I going to choose to delay or put it off? God loves you. We love you. And we want you to make life's most important decision today is to believe what the Word of God says, that you may have eternal life. He said in 1 John uh, 5.13 that He wrote these things, that you may know that you have eternal life. Put your faith in Him. Pray out to Him. God knows our heart. God sees where we're putting our faith. So we take those three steps. We acknowledge that we're sinners. We acknowledge that we can't save ourselves. And thirdly, we confess with our mouth that He is Lord and we accept the gift that He has given us. He says, Thou shalt be saved. We want to help you. Pray with a heartfelt out to God. God knows your heart and put your faith in Him. And if there's, if there's further questions you may have, or, or if we can help you further to understand what God has written in His Word, reach out to us. When, when we close, God, we're, uh, we're going to put a slide up. It's going to have my email address, the church address, and my telephone number. You can text, call, send a letter in the mail, or even an email, and we'll be glad to help you. If you made a decision today, we'd be glad to offer you a Bible or a Bible study that you can grow in your faith and you can see what God has given to you. So we pray that you would make life's greatest decision today. Don't put it off. Accept Him today. Would you do that?